This is a breaking news alert from 24 Hour News 8. First at 6, more on that breaking news out of Lansing. A minimum wage bill is headed to the governor's desk tonight after both chambers voted to raise the state's minimum wage to $9.25 an hour. That comes as we get our first exclusive numbers on the race for governor. Mark Schauer or Rick Snyder, those are the front runners. We are still months out from the big election, but obviously things are heating up fast. Our in-depth coverage on Decision 2014 starting tonight with those exclusive polling numbers. 24 Hour News 8's political reporter Rick Albin is live in Mackinac City for the Mackinac Policy Conference. In addition to those poll numbers, he's learning when the governor might sign off on that minimum wage bill. Rick? We now know that these numbers, the first numbers that we can really use as a baseline for tracking this election from here for the next five or so months are finally in. And here's what they say. 600 likely voters were surveyed last week. Those 600 voters were asked who they would vote for, Governor Rick Snyder or Democratic challenger Mark Schauer. They said to a tune of 47 to 38 percent, they would vote for Governor Rick Snyder. Now, that poll comes with a margin of error of plus or minus. Remember, that's plus or, not plus and, plus or minus 4 percent. These numbers, as with all polls, are an opinion of right now, a snapshot of a moment in time, if you will. And they come at a very interesting time, just as we get ready for the Detroit Regional Area Chamber Policy Conference on Mackinac Island. That's why we're here covering this all week. There's going to be a lot of talk up here on the island. They'll talk about moving forward and all of the things that the elections could impact, including minimum wage. Within the last half hour, we've learned that the minimum wage in Lansing apparently has been agreed to to go to above 920 or up to 920 over the next several years. I was told by an insider just a few mo moments ago they anticipate the governor may sign that bill as early as tonight. If that happens, that takes some of the variables off the table. The Senate had passed that bill. The House looked like they might not. They made changes, but apparently there was an agreement between the quadrant, the four leaders, that said we will do this. Now, if that's the case, if the governor does sign that, if all these votes have been cast, that means some other things might get easier. For example, that big fiscal package for Detroit, as well as roads. Roads, of course, a big sticking issue. Republicans are not going to want to raise taxes without Democratic votes. Democrats were not certain to give those votes unless the minimum wage process went through. And for the Detroit package, again, there were some reluctant Republicans, but this may all come together, and it may do, do so rather quickly. Uh, the other important thing to note in all of these numbers and all of this activity is that all of this is a matter of cooperation, trying to get enough Republicans and Democrats to pass these along so they are bipartisan, so not one party is hung out on these one way or the other. And tonight, as we get ready to head over to Mackinac Island, this looks like a, a very exciting week to be up here. There's going to be much to talk about. Minimum wage, something that could happen with roads. Of course, they're very interested in the Detroit fiscal plan or financial plan. And, of course, the big race, the race for governor we just talked about. And there's another marquee race. I'll be talking to the candidates for governor and for the U.S. Senate candidates. And, oh, by the way, we have some numbers on that, too. And we'll have those in just a second. First from Mackinac City, I'm Rick Albin. Back to you. Here are those numbers. A close race, but our exclusive polling shows that Democrat Gary Peters leading West Michigan native and Republican Terry Lynn Land. Peters has a 6% edge, but 18% still undecided. 